Santini. Asante ni sana. Kenya oye. Kenya oye. Asante ni sana wenzangu. Niruhusu wenzangu nisome speech yangu kwa sababu ya wageni wale wako na lugha ambayo wataifahamu. Your Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Excellencies, Heads of Delegations, Governors representing various counties, Senators, Members of Parliament, Your Excellency Ambassadors and High Commissioners, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Fellow Kenyans, today is yet another historic day for our great motherland, Kenya. First and foremost, our gratitude is to the Almighty God. Indeed, the prophet Isaiah proclaims that when you pass through the waters, I shall be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. And when you walk through fire, the flames will not consume you. Our God is truly a faithful God, and he heard our voices when we cried out to him, he listened and answered our prayers. And he has brought us thus far, and he will take us much further. This, fellow Kenyans, is the testimony of our country today, and for this, we thank God. Let me at this point welcome all our friends and partners from our region and beyond, who have spared their valuable time to come and celebrate with us. We say to them, Asante sana, Nakaribu Kenya. Today we celebrate you, the Kenyan voter, that has been the most important player in this selection. Everyone who voted played a role in strengthening our democracy. And indeed, today's celebration is yours. Shukran Wenzangu wa Kenya. You will all agree with me that the task of managing multiple elections is not a simple business. And for this reason, I wish to thank the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission for managing that process under immense pressure. Our judiciary, particularly the Supreme Court, adjudicated our election, electoral petitions with independence. Let me also take this opportunity to thank my friend and brother, the Deputy President William Ruto, for his energy and optimism that lifted our campaign. I take this opportunity to also thank Rachel Ruto, who has been the spiritual and prayerful bed bedrock of our campaign and the Kenyan nation. I can also not forget to thank my dear wife, Margaret. You have been a pillar of strength, and your passion to uplift the well-being of every Kenyan inspires me as it inspires millions of Kenyans.
Fellow Kenyans, you took the time to listen to the different points of view and to the leaders who asked for your vote. We may have chosen different candidates and different visions, but each one of us voted for a better life. I too listened carefully to my competitors, and in the spirit of inclusivity, I will endeavor to incorporate some of their ideas. This is because the election was not a contest between a good dream and a bad dream. It was a contest between two competing visions. I believe that those who voted for me chose the better vision. This, however, does not invalidate the aspirations of those who did not vote for me. I undertake today to be the custodian of the dreams of all and to be the keeper of the aspirations of those who voted for me and those who did not. I will be president of all. And I will devote my time and energy to build bridges, to unite and bring prosperity to all Kenyans. To all our elected leaders, please accept my congratulations. You won the confidence of the Kenyan voters and the Kenyan people, who are some of the most discerning anywhere in the world. Today, I ask each and every leader to join me in serving the people of Kenya without regard to political affiliation or choice, for every Kenyan deserves our full attention. The election that we have just concluded is probably one of the longest ever held in our continent's history. Today is the 123rd day since we began on August 8th. Today's inauguration therefore marks the end, and I repeat, the end of our electoral process. The elections are now firmly behind us. My fellow Kenyans, it's been a trying time. But once again, Kenyans have shown their resilience in calming their passions and the passions that accompany political competition. Strength, I believe, comes from being tested. And Kenyans, have been tested as a people since before our independence. The struggle for freedom was long and hard, but as a people, we overcame. After independence, our nationhood was once again tested by shift to separatism, but again, we overcame. In 1982, Kenya was once again tested by an attempt to overthrow a constitutionally elected government, but we overcame. In 2007, we faced what is probably the greatest political crisis in our country's history, and again, we overcame. Not only 
did we overcome. But as a people, we gifted ourselves seven years ago one of the most progressive constitutions in the world. This is, is our character, a people who come together in the toughest of times to forge ahead, confident that tomorrow will be better. And that is why Kenya stands tall in the community of nations, and this is something we should all be proud of. Fellow Kenyans, the path to a better future is unity. And I believe that we can build a nation in which we live in peace as brothers and sisters. Whatever part of the country they come from, whichever way we may worship God, whatever language we speak, instead of division, I know that we can build a Kenya which prospers by rewarding hard work and leaving no one behind. Brothers and sisters, as I see it, you and I together can build a Kenya which all of us are proud to call home. But as every Kenyan knows, few good things come for free. There are two significant things that I believe we must address ourselves to if we are going to build a united, stable, and prosperous Kenya for all. The first one is to muster the courage to embrace our future by freeing ourselves from the baggage of past grievances. And the second is to keep to the rule of law. Fellow Kenyans, however serious our grievances may be, the law must reign supreme. The law should be the refuge for every Kenyan, and none of us should break outside the law or constitutional order, whatever our grievances or protestations. For those in doubt, let me remind you, when a foreign court, the ICC, demanded compliance of us, despite our serious misgivings about the process, we complied. When the Supreme Court of Kenya ruled to invalidate our election, despite having won and being told that the processes mattered more than your vote, we complied. My administration has demonstrated by its actions its readiness to live and lead by the rule of law. By extension, we expect nothing less from each and every citizen. In the Constitution, we acknowledge the supremacy of the Almighty God of all creation, and we swear to respect our ethnic, cultural, and religious diversity. And we have resolved to live in peace and unity as one indivisible sovereign nation. That, fellow Kenyans, is the Constitution and the laws of Kenya that today we have sworn to protect and defend 
and I intend to do so. Our Constitution has created three independent but interdependent arms of government. In its spirit and letter, the Constitution has spelled out the functions of each of these arms, and there are no overlaps, no ambiguities in the execution of these roles. There is no gray area. What is true of each arm of government is true also for the two levels of government. As President, I will play my role as constitutionally defined, and I expect other arms of government to do the same. Nilazima kilamtu afanye kazi yake kulingana na katiba. This way, together, we will deliver our promise to the people of Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, human desires sometimes know no natural limit. Left unmoderated by faith or law, they can destroy a nation. To live together in peace and prosperity, a people must agree on a common set of rules. Kenya is a community of more than 40 million people, all with their own views and beliefs. We have lived together in peace since independence, proof that even when we disagree, we know how to live under a single set of rules. The greatest challenges to peace and security in our country have come when we have deviated from these rules. In the last four months, we have tested the rules and institutions that we established for ourselves. It has not been easy. The IBC, our courts, our security agencies, all our institutions have been stretched, some almost to breaking point, by the cut and thrust of politics. But they have held. When our institutions work properly, all our expectations are delivered, some in our favor and some against. But that is democracy and the rule of law. We have learned that our institutions are far more resilient than we might have thought before. They needed to be tested for us to discover their strengths and weaknesses. And today, we are a people who can tell the world that we live under a robust constitutional order and that our Constitution is no piece of paper, but rather the living expression of our desire to live as one. In our pursuit of perfection in our institutions, I can say that there is always room for improvement, but we should not destroy our institutions every time they do not deliver the individual outcomes we want. Even if the rule of law does not immediately solve all our problems, its progressive application remains our guaranteed protection. Moving on, fellow Kenyans, when I reflect over the last four years, there are a number of things that I can say I am proud of. And amongst these, four stand out. First, 
I am proud that we have entrenched devolution. We have built a Kenya where every county is the center of the nation, where every county is the center of economic development. Through devolution, we have delivered government to the people. Secondly, we have built on a firm foundation for economic takeoff. Our aggressive reforms to our business environment have made us the fastest improving business environment anywhere in the world. In three years, we have risen 56 places in the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business Index from 136 to 80th, and our target within a few years is to be 50th. And we have, fellow Kenyans, new businesses established to show. We have embarked on building an entirely new world-class railway system and thousands of kilometers of access roads to connect producers to markets. We have ensured our children can study at night because we have connected thousands of schools and millions of homes to electricity. What do these things mean? It means, for example, that since June of this year, more than half a million Kenyans have traveled the Mombasa-Nairobi route cheaper, faster, and safer than ever before. It means that the children of Gagadigiri Primary School, a public school in Meru, had a mean score this year of 404 to claim the sixth position nationwide. They have made the most of this opportunity. And the next year, we'll send many of their 71 exam candidates to national schools. Thirdly, we have made investments and reforms that have begun to transform healthcare delivery in Kenya. Through the free maternity program, our mothers no longer see delivery of our children as a life-threatening experience. Similarly, the expansion of public hospital infrastructure and the transformation of NHIF have improved access to quality health care for millions of Kenyans. Fourthly, we have reformed our education system. We have restored the credibility of our exams. We have made education the great equalizer by removing exam fees, by providing digital learning devices, and by reviving our technical and vocational training institutes. So fellow Kenyans, let me now define the road ahead. For the last five months, I have held over 700 campaign meetings across the entire length and breadth of our country. I have spoken and interacted directly with millions of Kenyans. As we engaged Wanainchi in small market centers, from Kemende to Kimilili, from Bura to Bumala, from Elwak to El Bagon, from Witu to Undanyi, we took on board their views, hopes, and aspirations. Most resonated well with our agenda, while some had proposals on issues that they felt we should include in our agenda in, in order to further positively impact their lives. When the dust settled after the August 8th election, 
it was abundantly clear that Kenyans had given the Jubilee Party and her affiliates an overwhelming mandate to execute our agenda. You gave us 62% of all the governors. You gave us 61% of all members of the National Assembly, including women representatives. You gave us 58% of all the senators, as well as 55% of the membership of our county assemblies from every region of the country. And I am greatly humbled by this. These numbers tell us that Kenyans know what they want. And we are determined to fulfill the Jubilee development agenda that they chose. And with such an overwhelming mandate, my party and I can have no excuses. Fellow Kenyans, this is my second and final term as president. I have taken on board the aspirations of the people of Kenya to move forward. And as I have done before, I dedicate all my energies and that of my administration towards achieving two principal objectives over the course of the next five years. The first is to strengthen the ties that bind us as Kenyans at every level of our society. It is time for us as a people to learn that it is fine for us to agree to disagree while still strengthening our bonds of unity and nationhood. On my part, I have begun reaching out to all leaders across the political divide, restating my commitment and expressing my willingness to work with them to achieve this objective of nationhood. My second priority is born out of all the interactions that I have had during my first term, and more so refreshed during the campaigns. Over the next five years, my administration will target 100% universal health care coverage for all Kenyan households. Let me explain what this means. Some of you will recall, for example, Jackson Wamai, a 28-year-old teacher from Muranga, diagnosed with kidney failure, and who once had to travel several hours to and from Nairobi for dialysis, threatening his livelihood. Today, it takes him 20 minutes to get a dialysis session in Muranga, and his job is secure. What's more, he doesn't have to pay for it. The NHIF covers it. But Jackson is only one of 6.8 million beneficiaries of NHIF cover. Within five years, my administration will ensure that 13 million Kenyans and their dependents are beneficiaries of this scheme. This vision will be driven by a complete reconfiguration of the National Hospital Insurance Fund and reform of the laws governing private insurance companies. Furthermore, it is also my intention to facilitate affordable housing and a home ownership program that will ensure that every working family can afford a decent home. That is why over the next five years, my administration will move to create 500,000 new homeowners. 
my administration will focus on attracting from both public and private sectors the injection of patient, low-cost capital into the housing sector. Policy and administrative reforms which are targeted at lowering the cost of construction and improving accessibility of affordable mortgages will be given first priority. Creating jobs and opportunities for our young population is also a top priority. <coughs> In this regard, we will target manufacturing. As you know, our manufacturing sector is the primary vehicle for creation of decent jobs. We will build on ongoing efforts, such as the VW and Peugeot motor vehicle assembly plants, the fertilizer blending factories, Wrigley's and in the confectionery industry. And similarly, we will target the creation of 1,000 small and medium scale enterprises in agro-processing. Over my term, it is my intention to grow and sustain this manufacturing sector and raise its share of the national cake from the current 9% to 15%. To achieve this leap, I have directed that with the effect of 1st December 2017, the power tariffs charged to manufacturers will be reduced by 50% between the hours of 10 a.m. and 6 a.m. This in line with our policy of a 24-hour economy. Further, my administration will focus on developing the following subsectors, agro-processing, textiles and apparel, leather processing, construction materials, innovation and IT, mining and extractives. The underlining theme will be one of value addition as well as value and job creation. Whether it is our vegetables, our tea, our coffee, oil or gemstones, our policies and actions as a government over the next five years will be to ensure that as much value and as many jobs as possible are created and retained in Kenya. We shall also reach out to our key trading partners to work with us to achieve a win-win outcome that enables Kenyans to get the most out of their products. This will involve negotiations to open new international markets for our products and to, and to attract even more investment. The recent prolonged drought has taught us some painful and expensive lessons we must completely re-engineer our agricultural sector in order to be food secure. Never again should we allow the vagaries of weather to hold us hostage. Over the next five years, we shall invest heavily in securing our water towers and river ecosystems to harvest and sus sustainably exploit the potential of our water resources. We shall take steps to address idle arable land ownership and utilization. We shall take steps to encourage and facilitate large-scale commercial agriculture to help di diversify our staples. And we shall redesign subsidies to the sector to ensure they target improvements in food yields and production quality. And we shall provide together with other actors key enablers within the farming process that will address distribution, wastage, storage, value addition of all our agricultural commodities. These, initi these initiatives, fellow Kenyans, are achievable. However, I, more than anyone, know that they will not, know they will not be attained without addressing the institutional failings of governance. I want today to put the public service on notice 
it is not going to be business as usual. I will not. I will not allow faceless bureaucrats and functionaries to deny the public the quality of service they deserve from their government. Secondly, we will engage with the judiciary to address the protracted delays in our justice system and the use of our courts to sabotage the delivery of government programs. This has been at great expense to the Kenyan taxpayer. Thirdly, through Parliament, we shall enact legislation to strengthen fiscal discipline and accountability at both the national and county levels. Every shilling of Kenya's taxpayer money must be fully accounted. Fellow Kenyans, indeed, as President Museveni has just said, no one eats politics. For the last 50 years, we have watched as the Asian economies have risen to wealth while much of Africa has stagnated. The difference is that they used politics to create vibrant economies for their people. In our case, we have pursued politics as an end in itself, rather than a means to economic prosperity. This must end. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to take this opportunity to thank Kenya's friends in the international community for standing with us. Kenya is a proud member of the community of nations, and we will always work hard to remain a force for good. We will continue to strengthen our economic ties and our bilateral and multilateral relations. We have all learned that in the fight against international terrorism, free and democratic nations are allies against a common enemy. We will continue to fight together, to share our knowledge and to support our allies. Indeed, as we have for half a century, we will work for peace in our region, for that is what a good neighbor does. For my fellow Africans, the free movement of people on our continent has always been a cornerstone of Pan-African brotherhood and fraternity. Today, I am directing that any African wishing to visit Kenya will be eligible to receive a visa at the port of entry. Mm. To underscore Kenya's commitment to Pan-Africanism, this shall not be done on the basis of reciprocity. The freer we are to travel and live with one another, the more integrated and appreciative of our diversity we become. The political balkanization that risks our mutual security, the negative politics of identity will recede as our brotherhood expands to embrace more Africans. Finally, to our brothers and sisters in the East African community, you are our closest friends. Our fate and yours are joined at the hip. Our troubles and triumphs are yours and yours are ours. I will work with you, my brothers, the leaders of the East African community, to once again bring renewed energy and optimism to our union. Together, I believe we can deliver the peace and prosperity for which our citizens are crying out. Divided, we will struggle to realize the full potential of our people. As a mark, 
of our continued commitment to you, our brothers and sisters in the East African community, from today, you will be treated like Kenyans. Like, like your Kenyan brothers and sisters, you will only need your identity card. You can now work, do business, own property, farm, and if you wish and find a willing partner, you can marry and settle in Kenya. And this commitment we make, again with no conditions for reciprocity, but driven by our desire for deeper regional integration. As I welcome you, I also remind you that equally, you shall be subject to the same rules and laws as your Kenyan brothers and sisters. Finally, finally fellow citizens, I want to remind every Kenyan that God commands us to love and protect our neighbor, and that the safety and prosperity of our nation also depends on how you treat your neighbor. Your neighbor can be from any community, can worship differently from you, but it is they who will take you to hospital on a late night when an emergency strikes. They will run to your door in response to your cries of alarm. Your children will play with theirs regardless of their differences, of the differences adults have. I today once again urge all of you to be your brother's keeper. Every day, I will work to bring you closer to your dreams and to unite our beloved country. This sacred task, however, goes beyond the work of a president or any group of government officials. I call on all peace-loving Kenyans to join me in this endeavor. Fellow Kenyans, as I conclude, let me celebrate our children. The greatest joy of my presidency has been my interaction with them. They have and remain my greatest strength and inspiration. They are a clean slate on which we can write the future. In them, I see the promise of a nation on the rise. In them, I see the promise of a united nation whose identity is not defined by ethnic markings, and we shall overcome our ethnic barriers, and we shall do so by learning from our children. I see this promise in that young, beautiful girl, Goldalyn Kakuya, who is here with us today. She overcame her special needs to emerge top of the nation in her KCPE exams. All of us together celebrated and loved her for her achievement. Indeed, if Golden overcame, so too will Kenya. Today, Today, I direct that in line with our promise in our manifesto of free day secondary education, all candidates who sat their KCPE exam this year must know their Form 1 placement before Christmas of this year. Fellow Kenyans, I ask you all today to make a pledge. I ask you today to reject pessimism and cynicism in your thoughts and talk about Kenya. Instead, embrace the empowerment 
that comes from optimism and hope, even when times are tough. Pledge that no matter what language you speak, that no matter what part of Kenya you come from, that no matter your religion or your social status, you will be your brother's keeper. Pledge to work as hard as you can to improve your productivity and to ensure that your children grow up honest and productive Kenyans and to grow your country to the best of your ability. I ask you today to pledge to reject the politics of division, hate, and violence, and instead take the higher, more sacred road of working to build your community and our beloved country, Kenya. May God bless each and every one of you. May God bless Kenya, and God bless Africa. Asante ni sana. Mungu awabariki. Tusali pamoja Sala ya buwana Tusimame na ndiyo tumalizie Sawa sawa Sali na mimi Nita waongoza kwa kizungu Alafu kiswa hili Ndugu yangu hapa pasta Ataendelea Our Father who art in heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <laughs>